video is about significant figures. Again, just like as explained with our conservation of mass video, it goes along with your guided notes that you have. You want to be filling these out as I explain the items to you in this video, just as if we were in class doing it. So significant figures, referred to as sig figs, they are in measurements. And in measurements, we must include all of the digits that are known plus estimated digits. And so this tells us how precise our measurements are into what decimal place or to how many unit um, places or significant figures there are in a measurement or in a calculation that we do. So for example, we have a ruler. And on the rulers that we use, usually on our meter sticks, uh, we have the centimeter side to them of the meters. And the lowest interval on them is the millimeter. And so when we take our measurements using our meter stick, we have to estimate one digit past the millimeter because we need to tell our audience that we know to the millimeter mark and we're going to estimate one place past that. So for example, I have a snippet of a meter stick here. Here's my one centimeter mark and the smaller marks in it are my millimeters. Know that there's 10 millimeters in a centimeter, 100 centimeters in a meter. And what I have here is a little bar and I can tell that it has been measured to the 1.2 mark. Now, after the 1.2, which I can firmly measure that it's 1.2 there, after that I need to say, well, I can estimate in between, but I don't know for certain how precise it is. So I go to my 1.2, which is what I know, and the place after that I estimate, and I say, well, it's kind of in between the two lines, kind of centered, so I estimate it as 1.25 centimeters. Now, of these numbers, which numbers are actually significant and which numbers um, are not significant? In this place, all of my numbers here are significant because I can tell you exactly how, how long my little bar is. Um, and all non-zero numbers are going to be significant. Now, zeros is where it gets a little tricky. Uh, there's three different types of zeros. We can have zeros to the left of non-zero numbers. So these zeros are never significant. Examples of this is 0 0.236. This has these zeros in front do not count as significant figures. But my 2, 3, and 6 are significant figures because they mean something. So here I have three significant figures. My number here, 0 0.0063. Well, again, these zeros that are in front, they're in left of the non-zero numbers. These do not count as significant figures. And so it's just my 6 and 3, so here I have two significant figures. Now between non-zero numbers, these would be zeros that are sandwiched in between non-zero numbers. These are always going to be significant because they're holding a place. They're saying you don't have any 100s uh, numbers here. So this number of 2083, this zero in here is important. It tells us something about the number. And so we have 1, 2, 3, four significant figures in my number here. In 0 0.607, now from before we learned that any number before non-zero numbers or zeros before non-zero numbers don't count, so we don't care about this guy, but all my numbers here, my 6, 0, and 7, well this zero is in between non-zero numbers and so this means it's holding a place. It's saying that I have precisely 607 tenths of whatever I'm measuring. And so this number has three significant figures. Now we can also have zeros to the right of non-zero numbers. And these are going to only be significant if a decimal point is shown. So examples of this would be 21.00 versus 16,000 with no decimal point here. By showing the decimal point, this tells me that I could measure precisely out to the hundreds place. It just so happened that it was exactly 21, let's say, meters long. Okay, so this decimal point tells me I can measure exactly this far. So here I have one, two, three, four significant figures. Now my measurement here, my 16,000, this tells me that I could only be accurate to the thousands place. Okay, these zeros here tell me that they were not uh, significant because there's no decimal point here. By putting a decimal point here, it would tell us that they are significant. 
So it, there's no decimal point, so they're not significant. So here we only have two significant figures. Now, a way that you can remember significant figures with the zeros as to which ones are important and which ones are not important, there's the phrase no period, N standing for the non-zero number before, N standing for never significant, zeros before non-zero numbers are, are never significant, and the O period stands for only with the decimal. So after zeros are only significant if a decimal is shown. Now let's get into our calculations. So significant figures in calculations help us uh, tell our information to our audience precisely how precise we can have our numbers be. So a calculated answer cannot be more precise than the least precise measurement from which it was calculated. Now there's two different ways that we can do this. There's our addition and subtraction rules and then there's our multiplication and division rules. So for addition and subtraction, calculations should be rounded to the same number of decimal places as the measurement with the least number of decimal places. So what that means is we have our example problem here. I'm number 41.3. This is significant to the tens place. The number 0 0.398, significant to the thousands place. And 11.24, which is significant to the hundreds place. Now when I add them all up, I get the answer of 52.938, which comes all the way out to the thousands place. Now I can only record my answer to with the same number of decimal places as the measurement with the least number of decimal places. Well my number being added together with the least number of decimal places is my 41.3 because it only goes to the tens place. Therefore I need to round my final answer to the tens place. The number after the tens place is my 3 here in the hundredth. This is lower than 5 so I round down so I have 52.9 as my final answer. Go ahead and try number two in your example problem. We're adding the three candy bar measurements together. You should get an answer of 6.463. And you want to round that to 6.46 grams because we have the lowest precise measurement with the least number of decimal places is to the hundredth place. Okay. Another way you can think about addition and subtraction is you round to the last full column. My last Right most full column, here's my tenths column, there's a number in every one, where they're missing a number in the hundreds here and in the thousands here. So I round my answer to the hundreds place. For multiplication and division, calculations should be rounded to the same number of significant figures as the measurement with the least number of significant figures. So here I check my individual numbers being multiplied together. I have 21.34. Four decimal or four significant figures. 5.40 has three significant figures. When I multiply the two together, I get 15.263. This right now has six significant figures, but my two items being multiplied together, one only has three. So that means my final answer could also only have three. So I need to round it to one, two, three dec or three significant figures. And so after my five, my number is less than five. So I round down, so I get 115. Go ahead and try number two. Remember to calculate volume as length times width times height, and that gives your units on your answer as meters cubed. You should get two significant figures as the amount that you can have in your final answer. You should get an answer of 33 meters cubed. You can expect a quiz tomorrow, so you're going to want to study this information and go through your practice problems with this as well.